So this is the part they don't like. Mr. I told you so is back. Let's get unpacked. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Oh, yeah, we back. Eddie Hearn speaks on a very rookie mistake made by none other than Team Haney in the Ryan Garcia fight. Now, I told you it's time to put an end to the BS. A lot of clickbait in the game of boxing. A lot of things that water down the sport of boxing. 2024 and beyond bet on boxing ego the information that i deliver take it to the bank eddie hearn in an interview with andre ward an exclusive with all the smoke fight he dropped some bombs notice the haniac channels they refuse to talk it's a, it's about it's an it. asset ryan but is emotionally ego. and mentally not he's also he's a he's a young bright boxing he's not, ego he's not you know, we going to get it cracking. That was a little bit of a preview on accident. So I can't wait. I, I can't wait. So you guys can hear the Haniacs. They don't want to talk about this, but this is the reality. A lot of mistakes were made in the Devin Haney fight. Actually, let me get my trusty headset so we can get right to the proceedings this evening. And I'm going to kind of narrate. And I want you guys to literally pay attention to what Eddie Hearn is saying. Now, furthermore, before I start, Eddie Hearn is going to reveal the rookie mistake made by Devin Haney and his team and how he tried to interject, but they weren't hearing it. And as a result, you got to live with the result. The Ryan Garcia fight played out how it played out. And if anything, you live and you learn, right? So I will be narrating. Roll the clip. It's, a, it's an asset. Ryan is emotionally and mentally not. He's also, he's a, he's a young, bright. He's not, he's not. I don't think he has the same mentality as Javonta Davis. You know? and I, no, and I think, I mean, I think he has a lot more assets in his mentality than Javonta. Okay. But in that one where you don't, like, he was looking at Javonta Davis in the ring that night. Sorry, at Ryan. Ryan Garcia. And I was in the ring with him and I was looking at Devin and I was saying to him, hey, come on, look at the state of him. Like Ryan weren't even in shape, really. So right then and there, he's talking about Devin's like mental fortitude. He says he was looking. He's basically sounds like he's making it sound like he believes that Devin Haney was kind of shook from the mind games and like, you know, wrapped up in the emotions, if you will, from the mind games that Ryan Garcia was playing or the behavior, if you will. And he says, come on, look at Ryan Garcia. Look at the shape of him. He's not even in shape. Well, you know, you got to get switched on. Another thing, that's why I said this, a lot of y'all not going to like it if you're a haniac. You're not going to like what I have to say because everything I said, you're now hearing from a different source and I'm going to rub it in your face. So I told you, it's going to be the, for a lot of y'all, it's going to be the worst year of your life. I told you this man, Ryan Garcia, he didn't look like he was taking this training really serious. He didn't even look in shape. And then you'll hear Eddie Hearn and then Andre Ward both agree that they don't think that Ryan was fully like locked in. So you just heard him say he doesn't believe Ryan was in shape. And I was in the ring with him and I was looking at Devin and I was saying to him, hey, Come on, look at the state of him. Like, Ryan weren't even in shape, really. I was going... Wait, what do you mean he was... He was just mean? like, I don't know what this guy's... Ryan's in the ring. This right? is pre-fight? This is in the ring. Pre-fight? Yeah. And Ryan's like this. And he's doing like these blinking... <laughs> like before they're announcing him. Like, honestly, you... So basically, Eddie Hearn's saying that Ryan was like acting like real spastic and like, you know, flinching and whatever. All the stuff he was doing in the, in the build-up. And he said, Devin... 
was kind of shook about it. Looking at this kid going, what, what? Like, and Devin's like this, like thinking, I, th I think he just did his head in. You know what I mean? I think he did his head And I'm in. saying to Devin, hey, let's switch on now because I know he's thinking like, is this guy for real? Don't forget through that whole build up, everyone's telling Devin, he ain't going to fight. I didn't think he'd make the I fight. Didn't think he was gonna so make what I you said. You imagine training every day. I mean, they, what did I say? Team Haney underestimated Ryan Garcia that he was even coming to fight because he was acting so crazy. Devin's a pro, good pro. Yeah. But still, you've got like, is he even going to show up, this yeah. guy? Next thing, you're in the ring thinking, you know, but I think Devin is the kind of guy, every fight is different. I think you, you, you're a smart fighter. AJ's like that. You, that. you need to be, and I just feel like that through Devin, the whole, the whole thing. Is that a strategy from Garth? That through Devin. So basically, what Eddie Hearn is saying, who was brought in to help Devin from his optics, from his perspective, he believes Ryan Garcia's gimmicks, his theatrics, his histrionics, whatever we're calling it, in the buildup and how he was acting manic, if you will, that did something psychologically and threw Devin Haney off. Pay attention. Yeah. No, because afterwards he says it was. But look at what's happened He's since. Continued. He's imploded even worse. Yeah. There's nothing strategic about this. The guy's just, you know, he's, he's out there. When did you know we got a problem? Andre Ward said, when did you know we had a problem? About 30 seconds into the fight when he landed his oh! first hook. Did you see it? This man, hey, Eddie's a fool with it. <laughs> Bro, Eddie was brought in to help Devin Haney. He is throwing him under the bus. Ward asked a real question. He said, when did you know that it was going to be a problem for the fighter you were working with, Devin Haney? He said 30 seconds in the first fight, in the first round, because that left hook and he laughs but look at what's happened he's since continued. he's imploded even worse yeah. there's nothing strategic about this the guy's just you know he's, he's out there when did you know we got a problem about 30 seconds into the fight when he landed his first left hook did you see it i mean you know like ryan looked massive 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 and that's when i say the mistakes you know the mistakes now we get into the rehydration stuff Play it. The mistake for me when you come in three and a half pound over, that's when you have to protect your fighter. Protect not your fighter. financial. Not bothered about another four hundred, five hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, whatever. You you know, I will never forget. Never. So Eddie Hearn is like, you gotta protect your fighter and look out for your fighter's best interest. And he's not talking financially, meaning, oh, you missed weight by X amount of weight, right? So tack on another 300,000, 400, 600,000. That's not necessarily looking after your fighter. It's looking after your purse. But you got to be smart in these situations. Then Eddie Hearn, he's getting ready to tell Andre Ward, who's interviewing him, the experience he had with Jay-Z and Rock Nation and Team Ward when he was going against Ward via Paul Smith versus Andre Ward in Oakland. Ego fun fact. I was there for that fight in 2015 because I'm the man, the best in the business, and that's in my backyard. I was at that fight live. I watched Andre Ward slaughter Eddie Hearn's fighter, Paul Smith, and I even have an interview, an exclusive interview with Eddie Hearn and you know some quotes from Ward and stuff from that particular fight, pictures and things like that. So Eddie Hearn, as a promoter, is telling you the rookie mistake made by Team Haney to pursue the Ryan Garcia fight with no rehydration clause. Play it. Forget, because it was one of my best educations. When you fought Paul Smith in Oakland, we had Paul Smith. Paul Smith was kind of like at the back end of his career, yeah. right? Looking really, it was a payday, right? He just lost to Arthur Abraham. Some people thought he won the fight. You wanted to do your homecoming in Oakland. Paul's heart probably wasn't in it as much. He messed up the weight, right? They come into me an hour before the weigh-in. We've got a problem. What? Paul Smith's overweight. Right. How much is he overweight? Four pounds. Okay. I'm like... So, I want you to keep this in mind. I was at this fight. Andre Ward dog-walked Paul Smith, who is a guy who Eddie Hearn was working with from the UK 
the Smith brothers, Liam, Caleb, Paul, right? So it comes from a fight family. Some people thought he beat Arthur Abram, is what Eddie Hearn just said. And he said the hour before the Ward Paul Smith weigh in, the team came in and says, we have a big problem. Paul Smith is overweight by four pounds, right? So remember what I said regarding Haney and Garcia, you guys and a lot of the Haniac channels, they were crying all because of the weight and saying, this is before Ryan popped for Osterine. They were saying Devin lost because Ryan cheated with the weight. But here's yet another example of a guy who came in even more overweight, but skillfully, Andre Ward is at another level. He's a cerebral fighter. So despite him continuing to fight a guy who is four pounds heavier, plus rehydration the next day, Andre Ward stopped his man. Devin Haney on the other end, they said that Ryan was a chump and Ryan was a C, a C class fighter and Devin was an A class fighter. And in the fight, he was really getting destroyed and battered by the guy he claimed was a C-class fighter. And he even said at the weigh-in that weight won't matter in the Ryan Garcia fight. So I want you guys to pay attention. Ward experienced that more than once. The Edwin Rodriguez fight is another time that I can think of off the top of my head. And this is what Eddie Hearn is talking about. Play it. Four pounds. We're in Oakland, yeah. right? I've got you. I got Jay, I got Rock Nation, you with us. I'm like, so now we'll be me, right? I'm like, I said, how much can you get off? They went, he's been working at it. He's f he's done four pounds. Like, I go, guys, you ca you can't be four pounds. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we go in, we let Rock Nation know. Like, I think they found out on the scout or whatever. Anyway, I'm up there. The next thing, and I'm young at the time. How, how many years ago was the Paul Smith fight? 15, Ten years, 15, yeah. Like 2015, yeah? Eight years, nine years ago. Yeah. Next thing, I'm sitting with Jay in a room, right? Yeah. And he's telling me that this is all my idea, yeah. our tactic yeah. to beat you, yeah. right? I'm like, I said, Jay, I don't mean to be rude. I said, my guy can't win a round mm. against Andre, even if he's 10 pound heavier. No, I'm a, I want this and I want that. And we want money and we want weight. You've got a reway tomorrow. You can't be more than this. And it was like everything that he asked for. <laughs> Sounds was about right. Yeah, but now this is a wild revelation that in 2015, Jay Z, the rapper, you know, also businessman in charge of Rock Nation, who was working with Andre Ward at the time, Jay Z, he's saying that Hove was chewing Eddie Hearn out, stating that this was their method to try to have a strategic edge against the fighter they had just signed in Andre Ward. And he's like, nah, we want to find you this and that. And he's basically saying that when Paul Smith came in overweight, that it was a strategy. They were just trying to get Andre Ward beat. So you have a guy who's a rapper, Hove, it's your boy. Spy, pop, boss got my chariots to fight. Everybody took shots, hit my body up a tire. Hove got flows, though he's no big and pot, but he close to how I'm posted when they got me fighting ghosts. <laughs> Media metal. You got a guy like Jay Z who's dipping his feet and trying his hand at boxing, and he's fighting and going to bat for his fighter at the time, Andre Ward, more than the Haney's are putting up a fight when Ryan Garcia missed his weight by 3.4 pounds that's crazy and it's hilarious that jay-z was cussing out eddie hearn listen that's cool that's yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. your back right yeah. now he had to weigh in the next morning right at a specific weight that's the standard procedure notice what eddie hearn said is what boxing ego has been saying that standard procedure in the andre ward in the case of andre ward Ward's representation went off on Paul Smith's side for trying to cheat their fighter and trying to have a strategic edge coming in that much overweight to give themselves a shot, punished them, said we we're going to find you, you know, probably threatened to cancel the fight, things like that. Eddie Hearn just told you that standard procedure to make Paul Smith weigh in the next day. Listen, got your back, right? Yeah. Now, 
He had to weigh in the next morning, right, at a specific weight. That's the standard procedure. Standard. When when they do a new deal, which I wasn't involved with with Golden Boy, on the weight. The first he just said, so what are we even talking about? Eddie Hearn says when Ryan Garcia missed weight and they did a new deal, which I wasn't privy to, I wasn't involved in that. It was just between, I guess, Bill Haney, Devin, and his lawyer and Golden Boy when they're working on the deal. Like, what happens next? Do we cancel the fight? Do we find the fighter? Is it a combination of these things, etc.? Eddie Hearn just dropped another bombshell saying he wasn't involved in that negotiation. So you got to ask yourself, what is Devin Haney and the Haney's? What were they doing? Why are you paying Eddie Hearn to be there? He's an experienced promoter, more so than the Haney's. And he's giving you his advice and his tutelage because he's been there as he's citing. This happened with Paul Smith who came in four pounds heavier versus Andre Ward. And then as you listen, Eddie Hearn will say that the Haney's and the lawyer, they renegotiated a new deal without him when Ryan missed weight and they refused a rehydration clause. Which I wasn't involved with with Golden Boy on the weight. The first thing you do is you make Ryan Garcia weigh in on Saturday morning. The first thing you do is make Ryan Garcia re-weigh in, which is what boxing ego said from the beginning y'all said i didn't know boxing y'all said i didn't know the business y'all said i was hating on devin haney now the guy that devin haney employed to be an additional set of eyes for the fight is throwing him under the bus saying the exact same things that boxing ego said spilling the beans and now the haney x is looking shook and stupid right because if you give him the ability to just rehydrate wherever he wants to get to you got to keep him on his toes. That's your opportunity. Javante Davis did. Yeah, but... but he, that, he'd had a, He had a weight clause, but yeah, then but he also was, had... But see, I don't know why Ward interjected with Tank. Tank don't have nothing to do with what Eddie Hearn's saying. Eddie Hearn's talking about a fighter who missed weight, and then they had to do a new contract per that. Javante Davis had a rehydration clause from the get-go. That's two different situations. We're talking about... The Haney's had a golden opportunity when Ryan missed a weight to cancel the fight or set new terms that were to their liking. The onus was on Ryan Garcia, who blatantly missed weight by a lot, by 3.4 pounds. Pre-contract. Now, all of a sudden, Pre you're on your Friday. The guy's missed weight by three and a half pound. Facts. The fight's off, really. See? So these and remember, he said, Eddie Hearn said the fight should be off. Because he missed the weight by so much. Who else said that? The great Ego Stradamus. You see a pattern here. Exceptions. Number one, we want money. Number two, you got to reweigh tomorrow. Sure. So you don't rehydrate. Sure. You make him sweat overnight. Sure. You make him panic overnight. Watch what he's eating. Watch what he's rehydrating. You know, all this kind of stuff. The no rehydration clause at that point, when he comes in heavy, is a, is a schoolboy mistake. Oh, Eddie Hearn, he cooking. He said the no rehydration clause at that point in which Ryan Garcia comes in heavy by almost three and a half pounds, 3.4 pounds is a schoolboy mistake. He's telling you out his own mouth. You make the guy sweat. You got you make the guy still have to adhere to some semblance of a weight and you punish him for missing the initial contracted weight if you were going to even continue the fight and not just altogether cancel it. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all getting cooked. Y'all getting cooked. And the funny thing is, love him or hate him, everything Eddie Hearn is saying is the business of boxing. That's exactly what you should do. This is not, this is not a case of a no-name fighter because no-name fighters rarely have any leverage or pull. So... I know fighters personally, they're not big names, so they're liable to get a call to fight a name and they have one week or two weeks to prepare. They kind of catch you off the couch slipping. This guy fell out. So you don't really have much pool. But Devin Haney's team, they were saying stuff like, it's our time. We're the best team. It's the Haney era. Clearly, Devin Haney should have either signed with Al Heyman or 
stayed with Floyd Mayweather, you know, that side of things, Floyd Sr. and Floyd Mayweather, because Floyd is also, on top of being an elite fighter, he's an elite businessman, and he's never going to allow a person to gain an unfair advantage or get one over on him pre-fight. You know, he says all the time, I'm not letting nobody cheat me. You know, if we can, if we can find out beforehand, if you can beat me, fine, you beat me, but you're going to have to really beat me. You're not going to beat me because you juicy and you on drugs or something like that. You're going to have to really beat me or you're not going to beat me because you had the Madonna skin tampered gloves. And everything Eddie Hearn is saying is proper. Panic overnight. Watch what he's eating. Watch what he's rehydrating. You know, all this kind of stuff. The no rehydration clause at that point when he comes in heavy is a, is a schoolboy mistake. Schoolboy mistake. Him? No, after, yeah, yes, and after the fact. But it was like they want to do things on their own. You know? He said, Andre Ward said, did you tell his team that? He said, yeah, I did. I told him that during and then also after the fight. But they wanted to do things on their own. Watch what he's eating. Watch what he's rehydrating. Listen, listen you know, again. All this kind of stuff. The no rehydration clause at that point when he comes in heavy is a, is a schoolboy mistake. Did you tell him? No, you after, in yeah, yes, and after the fact. But it was like they want to do things on their own, you know, okay, no problem. Look, like we weren't contractually involved in the fight. We had no, you know. But you have their ear. Yeah, and we told them. I said to the, we said. He said we weren't contractually obligated. So Eddie's completely being honest, I believe, but throwing him under the bus at the same time. Basically, what it sounds like is. Devin brought Eddie Hearn along for the ride, but he wasn't the captain of the ship. He was just an additional person. And the Haney's wanted to do things their way. And it sounds like ineptitude. They seriously thought Ryan was on some BS. Ryan would be easy work. Tank made Ryan quit, dropped him. They thought Devin was probably feeling himself from the Regis Prograde performance. So they weren't trying to hear any of that. Now, I strongly believe because Devin Haney has had a long history of blowing up overnight himself. He's a snack fighter. And if you look at his Friday, he'll make the weight. But then on Saturday, his unofficial weights or just the visual looks, the optics of Devin Haney, he filled out and he looked way bigger the day of the fight. So I firmly believe what I've always believed is that Team Haney on top of underestimating Ryan Garcia, which was very apparent. You thought Ryan was a joke. You thought you could have similar success to what Tank had. And he was skillfully, you thought Devin was on another level. On top of underestimating Ryan, I strongly, and I repeat, strongly believe that this shows the level of novice from Team Haney. And they didn't want Devin Haney, who's notoriously blowing up overnight as i just mentioned they didn't want for ryan to have to do a same day weigh-in and they possibly had to do a same day weigh-in and both fighters are re-weighing in saturday and then it comes out that devin haney ballooned up 28 30 pounds 32 pounds overnight they thought this would all be handled in the ring with devin haney getting a clear-cut victory one way or the other, decision, knockout, whatever they thought. And that's why I truly believe that they didn't listen to Eddie Hearn, which he'll say in a second. He said, I told him that. And they wanted to do things their their way. But I think they didn't want it on wax with how much they weighed the day of the fight. So huge, glaring rookie mistake. Comes in heavy. Is it? Is a schoolboy mistake. Did you tell him? No, after, in there? yeah, yes, and after the fact. But it was like they want to do things on their own, you know. Okay, no problem. Look, like we weren't contractually involved in the fight. We had no, you know. But you have their ear. Yeah, and we told them. I said to the, we said to the, the lawyer and everybody, you must make him. No, they don't want to. They're happy. Blah blah. blah. I said, okay. They don't want to. They're happy. We told them that you must make Ryan weigh in the same day of the fight, and they said, nope, we don't want to. Everybody's cool. We happy. Horrible, horrible business decision. You must make him it. No, they don't want to. They're happy. Blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. Now, going back to UV Paul Smith, I remember the next morning we had to weigh in and he was 
trying to make weight on the morning of the fight. Now, you were going to beat him if he was in the shape of his life. But the advantage that you had in that respect, which you didn't need, but anyway. I'll take it, though. Yeah, of course. Because it's his fault. Of course. And it's right. Ryan Garcia's fault. Mm. And you've got to punish him for that. Not just with a few hundred thousand dollars. With, with making sure that he doesn't have a physical advantage. Mm-hmm. I would also like to say, and I say this a lot to people about you. Eddie is really out here cooking the Haney's with facts. He says, when you fought Paul Smith, you and your team looking out for you, you punished him by making him have to try to make another way in the next day, which they absolutely should happen. Because if that's the case, you get a person that does exactly what Ryan did run away with the victory. Ryan Garcia gets lit off of a victory and battering Devin Haney. And, you know, some people could argue that it was intended the 3.4 pounds. You'll never really know, but Ryan don't care about giving up 600 K. Even if he had to pay a million, Ryan got endorsements. He got investments. He made a lot of money in the tank fight. Beating Devin Haney would be greater than the fine that he had to pay. So this is bad business from Bill Haney and Devin Haney to have even allowed this. You're going to let somebody use your brand and run your brand into the ground with a performance where arguably they didn't even look really trained. They didn't look disciplined and they skate off with the victory. You you pretty much sold your belt for 600, 650,000. The penalty Ryan has paid to Devin Haney's side for missing the weight, not 500K per pound, which they lied about, right? You allowed and you essentially sold your belt because now Ryan don't care. He don't care about that 700,000 or whatever. Even with the failed drug test, Ryan Garcia is just like, Shaggy, wasn't me. Cut me red-handed, treated on the bathroom floor. Wasn't me. He's just saying, wasn't me. And then now fans are like, oh, Devin, you got beat. Shut up. You can't even knock out a guy at the fair. Yada, yada, yada. This is just horrible. You never put your, and this is what I said from the beginning. You never put your fighter in this position because now Devin is being ridiculed. Ryan popped dirty. I get that. That's why he's suspended. But now Ryan kind of has an advantage here going into the rematch. He knows he can, he knows he wasn't fully trained, which Ward and Eddie Hearn agreed to. He wasn't in any type of fight shape. But now, if they were to rematch, he has a psychological edge. He knows he can hurt Devin. Devin doesn't know that he can beat, as a pro with no headgear, smaller gloves, that he can beat Ryan. After that fight, you came up to me in the ring. And the the deal that I did with Jay was that he had to pay you about $125,000 extra for missing weight. And you came up to me and you said, is he a good guy? And I said, yeah, he's a great guy. He said, does he have a family? I said, yeah, he's, you know, they're all here. Blah, blah. He said, tell him to keep the $125,000. And I'll never forget that about yeah. you. That was a very nice touch. Yeah. So Andre Ward, classy move, classy doom. Paul Smith should have had to pay 125K per their agreement for missing weight. That's what Jay-Z's side, you know, they taxed him. And Andre Ward said he's a family man. I already beat him. Let him keep his money. Classy move. So basically, mistakes were made. And I didn't take any commission off the 125. That's good. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, that's a cla- classy move. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, going back to the other fight. And that's just showing you Andre Ward is good enough to be the guy who missed weight egregiously. Devin Haney called, again, Ryan, a lousy fighter, a bum, and I'm going to show levels, and he's a C-plus fighter, I'm an A-plus fighter. He said that and talked that, but he couldn't make Ryan Garcia look like a C-plus fighter in the ring. You're now, when those guys are in the ring, I'm looking over at the size of Ryan Garcia. He looked like a, a middleweight. Right, I mean, he didn't. He, he didn't even look really in shape. 
right? I don't think he was in tip top <laughs> shape. I think he was in decent shape. Yeah, yeah. And you could tell because as the fight was going on, he'd have a big round, he'd throw a lot of punch. He needed a round or two to recover. Yeah, yeah. In tip top shape, you get that back in 60 but seconds. But he had the ability to, to hurt Devin. Mm -hmm. Notice they're saying the same thing that Boxer Ego said. Ryan was not in shape. A lot of y'all talked about how Ryan had to do this rehydration clause with Tank, and I told you, he did. He had a rehydration clause with Tank, which ultimately proves to be smart because Tank has a smart team, and he's not going to let nobody jockey no weird position over him and break the rules set forth in the contract. That's just smart business. But in addition to that, his team, Ryan just looked better and sharper, and he looked like a better fighter. It just was Tank wasn't allowing him to look like a sharp fighter. Meaning, if Ryan fought someone else not named Tank that night, he could very well still be undefeated to this day. It's just Tank wouldn't give him anything. Versus Ryan looked sloppy, and he was doing the California Victorville shell. And like Andre Ward just said, he would have success and then have to take breathers and stuff. He was just fighting really weird like he wasn't in tip-top shape. Every shot that he landed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the left hook's a, a powerful punch. He, the, the first round was a major problem. It was. Because when, you know, and it took Devin a while to get over that. But as you're seeing this fight unfold, what are you thinking? I mean, it's... I'm thinking he'll gas. Ryan. Yeah, stay okay. in the fight. Yeah. Stay in the fight. But then tactically, Devin was really poor. Like his defense was mm. leaky. His feet weren't really weren't really there. You know, then I started thinking about how well did you make the weight here? You know? Now he just said, How well did Devin make the weight? Mm-mm-mm. And he said Devin's defense was leaky, his feet weren't there. So he's saying what I was saying, Devin didn't look good himself. And now he's questioning how Devin made the weight. And then he goes on to say, basically, that Devin could have been almost got got because he underestimated Ryan Garcia's seriousness. But Listen. you're going through this training camp, as we said, with probably doubts in your mind as to whether this fight's even going to happen. You know, he's always tight the way. I mean, now he made, what, 35, Devin, for so long, yeah. you know. But then he got hurt, knocked out. I mean, he showed unbelievable heart. And, and to be honest with you, I think the defeat, particularly bearing in mind that Ryan was on pets in the ring, right? Is I think he's psychologically and emotionally quite damaging for Devin. And I think it will take him a while to get over it. I don't think he he'll fight this year. He said, I don't think he'll fight this year. It's going to be emotionally damaging to him. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, because I don't think people have actually given him the credit of what he went through that night. Like he took a beating. In that took fight. a beating. Right, his face after the fight, his jaw was out here. He and showed that, tremendous heart. He did it, and not not one time he could have easily yeah. taken taken an easy route. He could yeah. have easily whispered to his, his legs father. were gone. He could have he blinked got, a yeah. certain way yeah. you know, to yeah. the to the doctor. They would have said, if they right, checked yeah, him, it's, it's a million ways exactly. to get out. He never took. So that. imagine going through that pain. One that the guy's coming overweight and he's massive on the night, and you can feel it and you know it, and then finding out that the guy's popped you know, for his pre-fight test, yeah. post-fight test, and everything. Now, if you take a look at it, your boy Ego, April 22nd, so literally two days after the fight, your boy Ego said Tank Davis's team had the safeguard of a rematch clause just in case Ryan beat their star fighter, although they didn't need it, Devin Haney is the WBC champion, or at least he was when I wrote that. Why didn't you add a rematch clause to the contract? Hashtag ego, right? And then I included a video that I had done previously showing that there was a rematch clause for Gervonta Davis if Ryan beat him. Devin's team didn't do that. The same day, I said, so Team Haney had no rematch clause versus Ryan Garcia in the event that he won, because that's what it was at that time. And look at this. He did not elect to do a customary same day weigh-in when Ryan Garcia missed weight by 3.2 pounds or 3.4 or whatever it was. Now, I just let you listen 
to Eddie Hearn on all the smoke fight, who's saying this was a schoolboy rookie mistake to not do a customary. You notice I used the word customary same day weigh in. So Devin Haney's team absolutely dropped the ball because that's like stand. <clears throat> you literally had Eddie Hearn who said that's standard issue. That's like a standard procedure that you would do when someone misses weight and you're a star. Devin Haney said it was the Devin Haney era. His dad said the Mayweather era is over. You're not moving like some sort of A-side star. Canelo would never allow Edgar Berlanga to miss the contract to wait and then not face some severe penalty or have the fight canceled. Right? They gave Ryan the lion's share of the money, which proves that Ryan's the A-side. You put two West Coast fighters on the East Coast to fight. Why did Team Haney move like this without any standard safeguards in place for their champion? Explain. And I got half a million views on it. Listen, I keep telling you guys I'm the best in the business and it's not even close. And now you see it. You got a guy in Eddie Hearn who was picked up by Team Haney to help represent them. And how is it when Boxing Ego says it, some people don't believe it. When Boxing Ego says it, they say, oh, you're lying. Oh, you're a Haney hater. Blah, blah, blah. I said, all the people complained about Ryan missing weight. Let's ask the real questions here. How come Team Haney and Bill Haney and Eddie Hearn looking out for Devin's best interest didn't have a rematch clause, right? These were the real questions that nobody was asking. But your boy Ego, being a free thinker, I was smart enough to ask, fast forward to the future, it's like body shots later in the fight. Those body shots early pay dividends. What I say in the past always shows up in the future. So therefore we win. And I find it so funny because when I say these things, you have a contingent of fans and they'll say, oh, Ego, you're hating. You hate Devin Haney and all this goofy stuff. They never really respond to what I say in my videos. Now you have a white man with blue eyes from the UK Eddie Hearn saying verbatim what I've already told you and nobody's saying what they say to me to Eddie Hearn. How does that work? Even the Haney's. The Haney's probably mad at what Boxer Ego said, but why are you not mad at the person who just threw you under the bus saying identical information to what Boxer Ego said? You guys see the game we're in. When Boxer Ego says it, people get in their feelings. But Devin Haney will likely work with Eddie Hearn again, and Eddie completely threw the blame on Team Haney in their side. Say, hey, I tried to warn him about the rehydration clause. It wasn't me. But somehow, some way, the best in the business, and it's not even close. People, they leave comments saying, I don't know what I'm talking about or I'm just hating blah, blah, blah. You can't run from the truth. That's why I had to do this unpack. So I told you, I'm gonna rub it in your face. You better hope I'm wrong with everything I say because we coming, we coming. Death Row East, believe in it. Eddie, he's saying virtually everything that I told you guys, and it's true. If you have a fighter who's a champion and has been doing good things for their career becoming undisputed or you know just building their brand the Regis Pro Grade performance WBC champion at the time and you see Ryan played around in your face the whole build up you seen he missed weight by over three pounds and you don't protect your fighter and here's the thing when Bill Haney had decisions as the manager and father and trainer that worked out well for Devin Haney, people gave him credit for it, right? 
or the Haney's in general. You give them credit for it. But notice when it's something negative or not so nice, like Devin Haney getting pummeled by Ryan Garcia and you have no safeguards in, in spot for your, your star fighter and champion. Now nobody wants to take credit. No, it don't work like it don't work that way. If you get credit for the good, you got to take credit for the bad, period. We unpacked. 